Dunlop Touring Cars now get their turn to try the new International Circuit at Mondello at the RAC Super Prix meeting. The uh, new circuit is good, yeah. It's um, certainly uh, out the back. It's uh, a lot of hard work, but uh, it's a good circuit, I think, yeah. It's tighter than I thought. Um, so it's all, it's many second, third gear. It's there's a bit of a dilemma in a few places, whether it's second or third, it's a bit in between. There's a couple of really nice turns on it, so you can get, particularly with the touring cars, uh, you know, get a bit of speed up, so you can actually really get the car at its best. Hard on brakes, hard on tyres, um, there's a lot of right, left, right, left, that good overtaken uh, positions, so it could be an interesting race. George Crozier actually leading the Touring Car Championship, but you won the last day and now it's going to be a hard job for you, the way you've to qualify this day. Well, basically I have to uh, do one warm-up lap and then a flying lap. Uh, it's going to be very hard because the uh, circuit's been new, it's new to me, it's new to the rest of the competitors, and I've done very little testing yesterday. In practice, George's lack of knowledge of the new track proves to be a handicap and it's Gordon Kellett who creates a little bit of tin-top history by putting his Astro on pole position. Kieran Greenan is alongside him. And a great start there from Gordon Kellett from the inside, but Greenan got it together when he got second gear. We're on board there with Crozier. In front of him is Ed O'Connor, last year's champion, but look at Turley, Mark Turley, just muscles his way down the inside into second place. I think that's the last thing uh, Gordon Kellett really wanted to see was Mark Turley's big smiling face sitting right in his back window, but he's not sitting that close because Gordon has just pulled about five car lengths. And George Crozier not looking too happy about things at the moment as we come down into the old part of the circuit and it's uh, Mark Thurley there under pressure from Kieran Green, Ed O'Connor and then right at the back there we had the Dunlop car not going too well, John Keeney in his little Renault Clio. The other little yellow Clio you saw there as I said was Ed O'Connor on the outside there having a look at the back of Greenan's car and he is the champion from last year but he's carrying a penalty of 70 kilos this year but there's no doubt about our man in the front of the moment. Gordon Kelly Green keeping that inside line nicely closed as they get into a little dab on the brakes then as quick as they can go through this long long right hander out down through a little dip to the left and then they come down to this double apex bend but you can see that Gordon has it all together at the moment in the inside there that's the fourth place man fifth place man is O'Connor oh and in the side of his door comes Crozier now whether you missed the braking or thought he could do it. We'll see that again because we've been on board down the inside. He's banging it into second gear, locks the wheels, and Ed is a passenger, and George is lucky to get away with that. And meanwhile, Mark Turley explores the outer limits of this new circuit. So, in the lead, Kellett, then Turley, then we have Kieran Greenham, and then we have Joe Murray in there, and then the second of the Hondas, and look at this little dice at the back there. That's John Keeney, number 43, getting a little bit of attention into his door. Yes, from John Farley, but out on the grass is Kieran Green. You can see his head bobbing around in there. He did everything coming out from the new onto the old. Michael Leonard Jr. there in the second of the Hondas. And again, Farley having a look down the inside of John Keeney as they pour their way out onto the old circle. And George Crozier beginning to fall back into the latches of John Keeney as they go down the straight. Obviously a problem with that car but still out on the fast line, leaving the inside open, and John just popping down the inside, something trailing off John's car. I think it could be the wing mirror that uh, Mr. Farrelly decided he wanted to take, but a little dab of the brakes there, but Crozier too, but meanwhile, on lap four, back with the leader, Gordon Kelly, but in the background, this is the battle of the race at the moment between Turley and Greenan. And Greenan, a very aggressive young man. He had a huge accident here a couple of years ago in a Peugeot 205. Hasn't deterred him in the slightest. And this Peugeot, which has had a lot of success over the years, probably one of the cheaper cars, I would imagine, out there at the moment, very, very competitive. And certainly in Kieran Greenan's hand, over the curves. And that's really fraught stuff. You've got Joe Murray there in fourth place. He's a man who's just really making up the numbers, but he's had some very good results this year. Joe's just come out for fun, but not for fun. Green and looking at that inside again. He's fed up looking at that wrapped down motor sticker on the back of Turley's car. But look out the back window. This is what Gordon really wants to see. He wants to see Green and all over Mark Turley's car. Slow themselves down. Let me have a little rest as they make their way out onto the new section once again. Now watch Green using all the road. He has a different line going down here. He tried the inside, tried the outside. 
left-hand drive car just to dab on the brakes, brakes off and then just throws it in over the apex and uses all the road on the way out. Coming down to this braking point again where we saw George Crozier do that nonsense to Ed O'Connor earlier on. A green and really truly on the limit. We saw him up on two, he two wheels twice on that lap already. So here he comes very late on the brakes, under steer, as the car tries to push the nose into the double hairpins there, and nothing in it, and Thurley going out over the curbs as he exits up over the hill, and then down into the new chicane. Here's the leader, that's Gordon Kellett. And there in second place, the man who really does use all the road at that part of the circuit, being ever shadowed by Green, and Green is through in the inside up into second. Yes, Green watching the tail of Mark Turley's car just slide around a little bit, he flicks it through, just saw the gap, and in he went. Didn't even have to rub the paintwork through the left-hander there, up the hill again, and Gordon now looking at him and saying, oh dear, I've got Green now to contend with. And in the background, all this time, Joe Murray just playing a waiting game. He sees the two lads hammering towns, and he says, there could be a third place in it for me yet. And that's the car that was used by the multiple champion, Michael Cullen, last year. But here we go, we're back out into the country once again, and Green and very late under the brakes this time, too late! He's off the circuit, inside goes Turley, he's going to lose one place, possibly two places, because uh, Joe Murray's right there coming up the hill, he's got the slingshot, and he's passed, a big mistake that time by Greenan. Just unfortunately, you can see in the Gordon's mirror there, just locks that wheel, you don't do this with Mark Turley behind, he just nips in alongside him, leaves plenty of room, doesn't block it, but once he gets out on the gravel, he's really a passenger, and in the background, Joe Murray can't believe his look, what did I say, sitting waiting on another place. But that third place battle isn't over yet, we could see in the background that Joe Murray was being hounded now by Green. First and second a bit lonely, but third place far from it as they come down the start finish straight once again. Can Greenan get back? He's only got one lap to do it, but it's a long lap now, 2.5 miles. As Alan said, Joe Murray out for the fun of it, but he's had two very good results, two third places as he makes his way through. Will he make a three? But Greenan has other ideas. Turley at the moment, I think, had left it too late to get by Green. I don't think he could do anything about Gordon, but he nearly did something about that second place, locking that right-hand front wheel, but holding the car superbly. Still the battle for third. Kieran Green and looking at that back window of Joe Murray's car as they make their dead way down into the start of the old S's. Remember, they turn long left-hander now out into the country for this new extension that brings it up to 2.25 miles and as Gordon said it is a superb circuit for the touring cars because it's second and third gear but it's flat gear. Now have a look at Green and this is where he just dabs on the anchors. It's a long way around the outside but he can shoo it out of this corner. And Kieran Greenan gets a very different look at this circuit, apart from some of the rather experimental lines that he takes. The car, in fact, is a left hooker, the only one of its kind out there racing today. So there we are, first and second, Mark Thurley in second place of the Honda, and then this titanic battle between Joe Murray and Kieran Greenan in the Opel Astra and the little Peugeot for third place. And it's not over yet, Greenan trying the other side, and that'll probably have lost him time. That was the spot where Joe Murray took that place away from, but he's having a look to try and get alongside again as they go through the S's. He's got to get really close to him, but again, it's the wrong side. Joe keeps that inside line. Long, long left-hander, and they're coming up, and the next one is a left-hander. True it goes, Gordon Kelly. See in the back one, Turley just touches the curb in second place. Who will it be? Still Murray, but Green can't get any closer for this third place, but Joe keeps that inside line truly closed. The background, you see John Keeney fighting away, but it's a long way around the outside as they head to the checkered flag. So Kellett wins, and very definitely is Thurley in second place, but who's going to be third? It's Joe Murray. I think it was due one. Four years. First Four race. years? Four years. First touring car race. Win in Mandela, yeah. I was hoping to be able to catch him in the first corner, but uh, I was dicing with a few black Peugeot, so I yeah, was tied up for a few minutes. Other than that, I would have been able to catch up with him and shined up his back bumper for him. <laughs> I'd done the first race just to see how, how I'd go on it. Uh, I finished third. And then I said, right, well, I'll have one more crack at it. And I finished third on that one. And I said, well, I really want to do the long track, first race meeting. And that is it, I said. And I finished third again today.
on a roof, they must be under 2,000cc. They must be only mildly tuned, very like the cars we drive on the road. And some say the people who drive them must be mad. That's the basis of the Dunlop Touring Car Championship, a grid full of fired up family saloons. So let's meet the men who take out the spare wheel, throw out the baby seat and dump the groceries before they go racing. George Crozier, the garage owner from Enniskillen, leads the series in his self-preferred Vauxhall Astra GSI. George Crozier, one horsepower, but uh, seven points in the lead in the championship, and Joe Murray's not out today. You must be happy, George. Oh, very happy indeed. Just maybe a reason here. Uh, Joe's not sitting on my back bumper. But still, uh, still all to do, because uh, Ed's going quick. He's on the 30 kilos later, so I'd say it has a bit of advantage out here. Joe Murray lies second in the Dunlop Touring Cars, but he's a spectator today due to business pressures, the business pressures of running racing cars for other people. Joe Murray, better known for the preparation of cars, but second in the saloons, the touring cars, but no car today, Joe. No, uh, I've got enough room, Brian. Four customers' cars, they come first. Customers always come first, but you did say that you weren't going to take the touring car serious, but I think you're beginning to think different. No, I mean, I, I think I've, if I was taking it serious, I would have my car here today. But um, if the car is still around, we'll do the next round of Mandela. Touring car champion Ed O'Connor is paying for his 1997 successes by carrying a heavy burden in his Renault Clio Williams. I had two race wins this year and a fourth and had a non finish as well, so that leads me back down in fifth. But I'm, I'm there, thereabouts this year anyway, so far. Gordon was talking to me about penalties. Are you carrying a weight penalty as well? I'm carrying, for winning last year, I'm carrying 70 kilos. And for a race win, do you get another penalty? For a race win, I get 30 kilos. That's 100 kilos. That's a heavy passenger to carry around here. Uh, nearly too heavy. The highly experienced John Keeney has also taken the Renault route. We talked about these weight penalties, and John, this is where you carry it. Yeah, we carry it here on the left-hand uh, foot well. The, um, we, we are carrying at the moment about 40 kilos. Uh, this does affect the car quite a bit, probably about a half a second a lap around here. But then you're penalised again if you win. Oh, if we win, we'll have to carry another 30 kilos. And if we were to win again, we would have to carry another 30 on top of that. Does it ever stop? Yes, it stops there. I hope. <laughs> this is where it starts. An on-pole position we have marked early in the little 1600 VTEC Honda. Very quick car and long, fast circuit. Beside him, the left-hand drive, three and on Peugeot of Kirlan Green. On the next row, we have Gordon Kellett on the inside, who's ready to outdo battle for this championship. Beside him, Ed O'Connor, and a good start there from Turley on the outside. A little slow from Green, he seems to have missed a gear, and both Kellett and George Crowley are swallowing him up. In fact, he's been passed by everybody. O'Connor now suddenly gets a boost there, and he dives away from John Keeney, but while O'Connor was alongside him, he seemed to have missed a gear. So it's fairly Crozier in second place. Then we're on board looking forward with Gordon Kellett. You can see how slippery it is through the first and second colonial corners. And then the rest of the field, John Keeney bringing up the back. In fact, the two Renaults at the back of the field at the moment. Yes, we have another onboard camera and it's looking out the back of Mark Turley's car and that is what he can see. He can see George Crozier looming big on. He gets it a little sideways. This man is absolutely fabulous at throwing this car through the chicane and gets it all out of shape there, Green, and just gets it all together but spins across the bow of John Keeney and lucky to escape. And Ed O'Connor too, that really was a close shave there, make no mistake about it. Turley though leads, coming down into the hairpin at the first time. The little Honda always seeming to go well here at Kirkeston. Second place Crozier, third place Kellett, another great Kirkeston specialist, Gordon Kellett there in the Castro Lastra. We're on board with it now. Kellett looking at the back of Crozier's car, can he do anything about it? Heading out to the right hand side of the track to get the very quick line to you can see the little damp patches and this is where you've got to be really tippy toeing coming into the braking early little puff of spray there but at the moment he's got to get away as quick as he can he won't have the advantage he had this morning because it was a damp practice and you can see that Kelly just lost it there just caught the curb and on the slippy track and these two are going to pull away from him Alan. 
We're looking back from the leader now, looking at that threatening man, the championship leader, George Crozier, in second place. And really, when he gets into his stride, I would imagine the 1,800ccs of the Astra should pay off on the straights here at Kyrgyzstan. But he's got to get through that chicane like a rocket, and there's no man quicker through that chicane than Foley. Yes, it's like Cape Canaveral. He just gets the second part so right, launches it up, and uses the outside of the chicane then to slow him down and get on the grip. But he's coming in to break there. Nice turn in. Very in tempo. Crozier catching all the time, just pulling a half car length back. And it's really between these two at the moment because we're on board with Gordon and he doesn't seem to be able to do anything about it. He's uh, coming through. This is a battle there now. You can see that Ed O'Connor has made his way past Green and is beginning to move in on top of Gordon for that third place. And we can remember a tremendous battle here between Ed O'Connor and the man who's currently leading last year. Ed O'Connor, very quick round here, but carrying a big weight penalty today. There's the champion trying to hunt down the man who's been runner-up in the Dunlop uh, Touring Car Championships for so many times in the past. We're on board with him now. Yes, that 100 kilos weight in the passenger seat would make the car want to slide through, especially through the right-handers. But look at Turley, just catches the inside of the car, but it launches it up again, and George thinking, one of these days he's not going to come down. But Gordon now beginning to fend off Ed O'Connor, so there's a two-way battle. There's a battle for first and second, and a battle for third and fourth. But Ed beginning to get to grips with the weight and the slippy conditions around this very quick curse. And now you can see Crozier beginning to close in on the back. Now the little Honda should have the superior brakes, but this year the Astras and the Vauxhall allowed and O'Connor just well, that's appeared by a little nudge there. Nothing really serious, nothing intentional. He just used his brakes. I was told, about to talk about the superior brakes, and we can see just where they are, George, at the moment. There's no way by for there as they go down the straight. So, George, ever closer as they make it down again into that little damp patch, and it's brave men that come down at this speed, but George, all over his boot. Can he do anything at the chicane? Well, what a shame this Dunlop Touring Car Championship has got such thin grids because they're really providing the entertainment, uh, the quality entertainment, with the small amount of people that are there. And this is the battle for first. George Crozier, the man who currently leads the champion, trying to get uh, uh, Thurley as they come down into the chicane this time. And watch this man as he goes through the chicane. He's really edged out his own line almost to the inside of the chicane and he tops her up onto three wheels as he hurls her through there. Tremendous stuff. Getting higher and higher each lap, let's hope he doesn't get it too high. But uh, Mark Turley, a superb competitor, has driven in the Unis, also involved with the Italian saloon car class this year, the new one, but turning in, locking up leads slightly there. George, very late on the brakes, has this new braking system on for this year, and that would help him towards the superior brakes uh, that the Honda had last year. John Keeney and Kieran Green and Kieran there on the left hand drive Peugeot using that outside line just trying to get himself together. Now John was involved earlier on with Ed O'Connor but seems to have lost out again. You can see the locking wheels Turley using every last bit of road as they come down into the right hand. Now can George do anything about it? He should have the power here of the two litre uh, Vauxhall as they head out just to this right hand, he's closer than he was before, doesn't get it out over the curb, heading out onto the back straight, he's just pulled out from the slipstream, and he's diving up the instant, and this is a brave manoeuvre coming into the chicane, just pops it on the curb, and you can see that Turley had to back off, straight over the grass time that, that time, Turley, but he had to back off because he just couldn't turn right. A superb manoeuvre. Yes, full marks, very experienced man, of course, himself, ex-GT champion, and now you can see the superior power of the Astra pulling away down the straight. But watch thoroughly, he'll be the last man on the brakes as he comes into the airport once again. Nice close-up study there, George Crozier, now beginning to pull away a little bit. Now he's just got to cool it, there's a lot of damp out there, it's easy to make a mistake. And here he comes into debtors, the fastest corner on the circuit, you've just got to be exactly on the right line there. A little out of shape coming down under braking. See in the background, Ed O'Connor up in the third. And has he gone on straight? Turley getting through, all right. And George has made a mess of it. He's outbraked himself and he's left himself a lot more to do. And he's got it all to do again. But not only that, he's dropping into the clutches of Ed O'Connor and the little Cleo. Ed O'Connor there, the yellow car. Uh, just in the background, here's Turley now. That was a big mistake by George. He'll be cursing himself for that one because he worked so hard to get past the Honda. Now he's got to do it all over again. And now he's got uh, the added pleasure of having this little Renault right on his boot. 
Tourney has led this race and he's been back in second and now he's leading it again. He thinks, what have I got to do to hold on to this lead? Well, as I said, the drying track, every lap is the advantage of the two leader cars. The little 1600 car beginning to lose out. Its superior braking and handling has been helping it again. George getting alongside, but uh, it's the wrong place to do it. Or will he nip through? He does indeed. Just the power of the Astra just zooming by the little Honda there. Of the Honda tucking into the slipstream, hoping to get a tow down the straight and maybe a chance to dart out of the slipstream and be very late on the brakings on the outside. Sure, he's not going to go try and go round the outside. He tries, but it doesn't work. That's the long way round. He's still side by side, but has to drop into second place. And all this time, Ed O'Connor is delighted because he's catching on the back of these two. And out the back, you can see now, he's got through, George has got through there. Just nip through again. They were side by side, but pulls back that first place. He nearly lost it, but got it back. Bouncing the curb. Look at Turley's beginning to use the grass and the curbs. And the spinner, George, has just thrown it all away. So there we go. George Crozier has thrown that away. So it's now between O'Connor and Turley. Identical accident we saw earlier in the race when Kieran Green and just got out on the curbs there and it's very slippery and it just all goes from here. Now this is a repeat of last year, this uh, titanic struggle between the little Honda and the Renault. And here we go, deja vu, action replay at Kyrgyzstan. With George out of the way now, he has regained that third place, so but a long way down. I don't think he can do anything better. Look in the background, the David Prentice car with the big wing on the back of it. This is the aerodynamics being changed. These pretty close to the back under braking. Both of these should be fairly equal on brakes and fairly equal on power as they go out through the S's. And watch O'Connor just move slightly in the background, trying to unease Turley as they get into that long, long right hander. But uh. I think the Clio should have the legs of it under braking, slightly lighter, but remember that 100 kilos. And that must be pretty disconcerting to have your boot uh, lid flapping or your rear door flapping like that uh, as you're coming down under the braking area. It makes no difference really, don't it, the aerodynamics of the car. But here's Thurley, down they come. They're coming down from about oh, over a ton now, down to about 35, 45 miles an hour for the hairpin. Really have to judge this absolutely right. We saw him nip in the inside of uh, Gordon Kellett there, but uh, Mark Turley had that inside door fairly close. He's got himself out in the grass and he's got away with it. This time with Turley closing the door on the inside, he just drove around the outside, just got a wheel in the grass, and you can see the wing is begin to flutter. And, uh, now, talk about looking at the whites of their eyes. Mark Kelly will be able to look right through that rear door and into the rear view mirror of Ed O'Connor to try and judge his opponent's mood at this time. And I'd say it's pretty fraught right now. Surprise, surprise, the braking on the Honda extremely to go. That's their third place, man. He's still holding off uh, little spin. No, Crozier, no. He's in fourth place at the moment, so he's trying to catch. But I don't think it's too late now for Crozier, but he's still got a couple of points in the championship, but a win is out of the question. And the two cab hoppers are at it full time. And Thurley now, this is the frustrating point. He must just see that little Renault pull away and superior power down the back straights. Nothing he can do about it now, except take three deep breaths and leave that braking oh so late, which is exactly what he's doing. See the back wheel just locking up there, looking at the inside line, but uh, the power and the weight of the Renault as they head to their side by side. Can he do anything about it? No, the little Renault just has the legs. The spoiler on boot, they're beginning to lift, but they're closer than they ever were as they get head down into the braking area. Very close indeed. Turley just about to pull out and catches the bumper. Catches the bumper of O'Connor and sends him off at a rate or not as a passenger. Wow, <laughs> that's an incredible spin. Cool air, I bet it's not cool inside that Renault just at the moment. Here we see it in replay. And I think really what happened there was Thurley was trying to pull out of the slipstream, just misjudged it slightly, caught the back of the car. This is giving him the benefit of the doubt anyway. And round goes O'Connor at high, high speed. Just look how cool he is sitting in the car. He's been facing every direction but oh, the right one. But this leaves Mark there. Turley so for tonight. the third time in the lead of this race out there on his own this time. So he's probably saying to himself, any more takers? I'm leading it this time.
So Farley coming out of the hairpin, he hasn't been so lonely for the entire race. Coming up to take the checkered flag, and I wonder if the official's going to like that one. This is in second place now. We have Gordon Kellett coming home in second place, and there is the result. Farley gets it, Kellett second, and O'Connor third. What a race. Well, we knew we were hoping for the rain like this morning, so we'd be able to stay out there, but we reckon we'd better cornering in the wet. And I knew if it was going to be dry that the lads would be able they'd have the power to just power by me in the straights. And I was correct, so I was just fighting one off after the other. It was unfortunate at the end, though, because uh, I went up, Ed passed me like it, I was stopped, and I tucked in behind him, then his boot came up. We were going down to the corner, I pulled across, and I tipped back left at him. And I nearly actually had a heart attack myself, never mind Ed. But uh, I'm delighted to win, absolutely delighted. Tell us your version, Ed. Um, I drove hard during the race and when I caught Mark and got by him and all I remember was coming down into the bottom corner and I was doing 360s on the grass then. Did you call it a racing accident? Uh, I think Mark might have a bit to do with that. But not on purpose? I don't know. I well, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Whatever you say, say nothing. Crozier still leads, but now only by one point in the Dunlop Touring Car Championship, and Gordon Kellett is very much into the shot. Only four points separate the top three in the Dunlop Touring Car Championships, and with only three rounds remaining, including today's race, it could hardly be closer. Ryan Chute has been talking to the trio at the top of the Tin Tops. George Crozier, the Fermanagh veteran of GT racing, has come to the top of the touring cars with a double win at Mandelo in early May. That pole position today here with, with Mark back in fourth place gives me a bit of a, a chance in the fourth corner to get the start right. Hopefully I'm going to go for it. Dubliner Mark Curley got his win in the north under somewhat controversial circumstances. As they get head down into the braking area, very close indeed, Curley just about to pull out and catches the bumper, catches the bumper of O'Connor and sends him off at a raid of Mark as a passenger. Hopefully I'll get a good result today and we're up in Kirkston again in about a week or two. If I get a good result there, the championship is actually still open, well open, so uh, it's anybody's to grab, but I'm hoping to win it this year. Another Dubliner, Gordon Kellett, is just four points adrift of his northern rival. He has come so close so often to the Dunlop title. I think it's uh, going to run to the wire by the looks of things, but uh, uh, this morning didn't, uh, didn't go so well for me. Uh, we, we qualified fifth, I think. Uh, but then, of course, we had only got two laps in order to qualify. This was the uh, fact that I came second in Kirkuston at the last round. It means that we've only got two laps in order to qualify. So I didn't really get two decent runs at it. So, however, we're, we're out there for to have a really good go. Touring cars have been thin in the ground this year, so the Dunlop Classics are at it today. Two races in one, and the Classics run on handicap. Unfortunately, when you're the fastest car, you have to start at the back in the historic race, but it's always exciting coming up through the field, and hopefully I'll get through all the cars by the time we get to the finish. So eight laps of this selection box of saloon and historic racing lies ahead, and the historics leave the grid first on handicap times. For Bertie Carruthers, the long wait is finally over as he sets out to catch the rest of the historic field. Don't forget when the saloons take off, this is the historics coming in. You can see Carruthers on the outside there, number seven, the beautiful man, Porsche Carrera, turning in, much better handling, just popping it up again to a very, very quick. Here you are, the seven saloons, and remember they have 11 of the historics to get by. A great start there from O'Connor on the outside, green and losing out a little bit. Cannot having a look at the inside, out over the white line. We're looking out the back of Bolger's car, so Turley there, up into third place, keenly going well in the little thing of a green keeping him out but going down through the funnel so it's Crozier from Ed O'Connor pulling a couple of car lengths through very quick and getting out much quicker again onto this back straight and you can see Turley the danger man in the background and then it's John Keeney in front and Turley having looked down the outside and just takes it around the inside wheel of O'Connor to go up into second place and this is what makes this sort of racing so exciting that particular sort of move Mark Curley, one of the most exciting in the pack. This is Pauline White, who's currently leading the historics in handicap, and she's going to be one of Bertie Carruthers' first victims. But remember, he's not only got a passer, he's got a passer twice, so there's a lot of work to do. 
as it concentrates, goes up again, down the straight, hitting about 120 miles an hour. We're back at the chicane. There's the leader, George Crozier. Second place, Turley, kicking up the dust on both sides, really trying. Under a handicap, because he's only 1,600cc, as opposed to the two litres of the Astra ahead of him. He drives it, I don't care if it's 1,000cc, he just drives the absolute wheels off. And George knows exactly what he can do. And look at this beautiful Mark 1 Lotus cartoon as we lift back to the classic cars. That's Derek Kerr and that, and you can see that Turley's got closer this time to Crozier. Crozier looking down that hill thinking, oh goodness me, I've got a couple of cars to get by and I've got Mark Turley right on my boot as they come into braking again. Derek Kerr keeping plenty away out of the way as Turley just using that wider line just to get turned in on top of George. Remember, going down the old circuit. We're back on board with uh, Carruthers as he comes up the hill to pass Pauline White. Not for the lead, but he's got to do it all again. So that's his first time to lap and look at Turley. Let's it all hang out as they come through and cut it out on the grass there. And that started a long time before he hit the grass, got it all wrong. Maybe passing the classic cars, the historic, you can see there in the replay. And watch, he does lift, just keep the shoe buried. Good job, it's a dry day. Looking back from Crozier and the pursuing Curly. Two of the historics coming down into the first turn. At number 35 is Martin White in the VH uh, Morgan chasing the 911 car of Jim O'Reilly. Bill Crosby just going out of picture, being chased by Dominic Peel, but not for long, I'm afraid, because look at the smoke coming out of the back of the Dublin. Those ink engines are always very fragile. Meanwhile, back with the touring cars and his Crozier still. Oh, and look at this. This means business. Turley having a good run at him. Gets George a little unsettled out on the dirt. Can he get up the inside? He does. They're side by side. Mirror to mirror. And George thinks, well, let him through. We'll have another look. In fact, he just caught the inside of the curb trying to get in tight. But uh, Turley up the hill keeping that inside line nicely closed. What he's got to do now is get the head down and see can you pull a few car lengths. But George isn't having anything over the curbs, trying to take a bite out of the back and in the background O'Connor is getting loads of pressure from John Keeney the two Cleos really having a ball out there John really got his one lit up now so we'll see can they take each other on but O'Connor will be having sights for the battle up front as well and in the background the black and yellow left hand drive car of Greenan who still gets a lot of fun out of a relatively cheaper car Carruthers just getting it slightly wrong just a little bit of opposite lock comes back out up the hill, he looks in the mirror, a lot of smoke, something in and that unfortunately is the big V8 engine in the Morgan, something let go, looks like a bit of an oily smoke and that is expensive smoke, Alan. So that's, I'm afraid, Martin White uh, out of it for today. Carruthers motoring on up the hill towards turn 11, and the marshal rushing to see if there's anything to put out. I don't think there's much left there. Moving ahead to lap four, and uh, Turley under big pressure now from Crozier. Crozier fighting back, and he's up the inside. I think he's got the run on him this time. He goes through over the hill now, down into the chicane. Can he hold it? And uh, you can see Turley locking up there, taking the curves on the inside. Great touring car racing here at Mandela. Yeah, Turley just got a little wide, let it run out now. If you're on your own, there's no problem. Just let it run out and keep the shoe in. But when you've got George Crozier that close, you've made a space and he takes it. And you can see that Ed O'Connor has gained from that manoeuvre as well. And he's beginning to move in, looking for that second place, looking out the back of Crozier's car. A healthy lead as far as was concerned over the past few laps. There is John Keeney still holding off Greenwood and Gordon Kelly recovering from that little run on the dirt, getting back into contention. But uh, Keeney holding that inside line as they go down the straight. The little field versus the uh, Peugeot closer in. O'Connor really late on the brakes. That's the one really good thing that the little Cleo has is the brakes and uh, the Astros were allowed to update their brakes this year. Back with our leader in the historic, in the classic class I should say, Pauline White in this beautiful 1275 midget producing about 120 brake horsepower maybe. Remember this man still has to catch her again if he's going to win this overall and the power of that he is really driving down to the quick S's little clip of the curb, a clip of the curb there and then lets it all hang out right to the edge of the track, just pops a gear very quick and this is a different course, this is uh, Jim O'Reilly, a lot of smoke and a lot of flame
flames from underneath. Looks like a big oil fire as well up onto the grass. The marsh is going over. What a shame if anything was happened to this beautiful Carrera. Still smoking away and flames, but two marshes there put it out. Let's hope there's not a lot of damage. Full marks, the Irish Motor Racing Marshals Club are very quick on the mark there. Pauline White coming to break now to the same corner. And we're looking back to see who's in second place. And that's Bill Crosby, who's really closing in in his little midget. Terry Kerr is in third place in the historics at the moment. It is Lotus Cortina and then fourth and trying very hard indeed. Number 74 there, Richard White in the uh, Mark 1, or is it Mark 2 in fact, uh, Capri, 3 litre Capri. Meanwhile, Carruthers now coming up uh, to take seventh place from number 99. That's Aidan Hanna as he comes up over the hill into turn 11. Aidan Hanna indeed in seventh place there, so you can just see that Carruthers really making his way through the 11 car grid. He's already got by the seventh place man. Meanwhile, back with the tin tops, and you can see that George has done the business, pulled four, five car lengths on Turley because O'Connor has Turley busy, and then it's Green in a fourth, and then John Keeney. O'Connor just getting into that little braking area just over the curb and then the boot to the board as they pull themselves out into the fastest part of the circuit. Lovely long left hand sweep and then down on the brakes again. And that's where he catch Turley, but Turley with plenty of acceleration and George just letting out that little bit onto the curb, getting a little bit untidy, maybe getting a bit comfortable when you look in the mirror and see that distance, you can afford to be a little confident. Those are really settled in now to really pulling away and looking at the championship is looking good for him this year. Taylor well, will never give up, of course. But look at Green and Kieran Green in number 27 there, the man who extracts uh, so much out of that aging Persia. Yes, he has a habit of just clipping the curve. Maybe it's because the left hand drive is sitting on that side. You see now in the background when he comes through here. Turley gets through and he just gets it launched in there and he's right on the tail of Ed O'Connor. Now this shouldn't be happening really, the difference in age in the car and the performance everything else. But in fairness, it's down to that young man, Kieran Greenan. He is just driving the wheels off it, as I said. And you've got to remember, of course, a lot of handicapping comes into this class too and in the situation of weight. They have to carry extra weight if they're successful and that's what's uh, hampering uh, that uh, yellow car, that Renault Clear, just ahead of this black one at the moment because he was last year's champion and he's a lot of handicap weight to carry. Possibly about 70 kilos today, but no handicap here for George. The handicap is in the background. He can see that they're all beginning to fall over each other. But remember, he did lose the lead to Mark Turley once, but that's because he was caught slipping, put it out on the grass, but you see Turley still trying to get them over that inside curb. And the little Cleo following him in the wheel tracks as they come down to this double right-hander. Again, Green and having a look at that right-hand side, and all the time, John Keeney sitting in the background saying, just one little titch, lads, and I'm up two places. Uh, number 99 being lapped there again by that's Aiden Hanna being uh, passed now by the Tintops. He's going to have a busy uh, moment or two as they come into the chicane. Crozier's through, and Hanna keeping very wisely out of the way of these guys, because they would be uh, not so precious about their body work as some of those classic car owners would be. Just put O'Connor just that little bit offline. <laughs> How did I tell you about Green? Leave a door half open and then kick it open and he's through. So it's Green and now up into third place. But uh, no, nothing to do with Hannah. He kept well out of the way. But just when you move offline and you're at that Raven Knots, you just have to slide. The tires are getting a bit uh, slippy out there. The heat that's in it today. And you see John Keeney now back on the tail of the other trio. So Green and up into there as the leader, winner I should say, goes over the line. So it's Crozier from Turley, from Greenan, O'Connor and Keane. Well, the Dunlop touring cars may have crossed the line, but the historics race on. Aboard with Bertie Carruthers, we're coming up uh, on number 74. That's Richard White in the Mark II Capri. And this is for fourth place. It goes round the outside. And fourth is the best he's going to get today because here's the finish. And Bill Crosby snatches victory on the line from Pauline White. What a finish. Derek Kerr in third place. In fourth place, Bertie Carruthers, as we saw. And Richard White in fifth. Very hard with for me to mistake and, and, and mark the past and it left a wee bit more for me to do. I thought I had it at that stage, but we rubbed a bit of paint and I got by him again, you know. Mark went way to the heaven. 
up to it. I want to have a look at George Carr. I think he's got an engine in the boot of it as well. <laughs> it's not that quick. It's very, very quick. You should, you could, I couldn't keep it up at all. I didn't make a great start and uh, took a couple of laps to get into it, but yeah, a few hairy moments all right. But I'm pleased enough after getting back where I was. Well, if Mark Shirley wants to climb to the top of the Dunlop Touring Car table, he has only this weekend at Kirkuson and next weekend at Mandela to do it in. It looks like the series is going to be fought out right to the final flag.